Wake up! Joey, don't fight back. Run, Isabel! Hello, welcome to Premier Scene. I'm Claire Bueno as we get to speak to Jason Statham at the premiere of his new film, Hummingbird. Hi, this is Damon. I won't be available on this number until October the 1st. If you need me, reach me on my New York number. Uh, hi, Jason. It's a long mic. It is a long mic. <laughs> Is that a mic in my pocket or is it please see you? Anyway, yeah, no, oh, the, no. the old ones are always the best. <laughs> anyway, so there's so many layers to Joey. For you as, as an actor, must be a dream for you to get your teeth into. Yeah, it's nice to be asked to do something that you haven't been asked to do before. Yeah, very much so. Through your portrayal, we see that he's a, he's a tortured soul. So what kind of preparation did you have to do to get into that mindset? Well, you know, we met a lot of soldiers. We met a lot of the homeless people that are out on the streets. You know, we wanted to try and keep it authentic and, you know, try and draw something from, you know, the uh, the company that they gave us and, you know, really, you know, try and use a bit of their stories in, and, and bring it into what we were doing as, a, you know, as making a film. Was it shocking for you to see how many ex-servicemen are actually homeless? Yeah, there's, uh, you know, there's a ton of them out there. But it's, uh, it's hard to come back from, you know, those traumatic situations and integrate themselves in... Uh, you know, into CV life. I mean, it's um, it's, a, it's it's a different set of skills that you need. You know, that you're that everything that they've learned and been good at is now no use. So it's like you bring all that back, and you know, there's all kinds of you know these harrowing images that they've had to see. They've lost their friends. They've you know, there's you know, a lot of people get disabled, and it's like you know, it's it's a it's a tough thing to deal with. And, and within the film, there's a, an unusual team with Joey and, and sister Christina. Was that interesting for you both as actors to, you know, explore? Very much, yeah. <laughs> Always fancied nuns. <laughs> Joseph, where did you get those clothes? Did you hurt someone? Only myself. Last night, they found a girl. Her name's Isabel. Did you love her? When you first see Sister Christina and Joey, they make a, an unusual team. And I just wondered whether exploring that relationship was, was intriguing to you as an actress. Yeah, it was great. I mean, uh, the great thing is you wouldn't think of Jason and me. You really wouldn't. And we didn't meet before the shooting. Stephen was simply sure it's, it's the team. It's like this and it has to work and it will work. And I think it did. So, uh, Do you think because you had different backgrounds as well, it helped, you know, from an acting perspective, you've come from different backgrounds. So did that help bring that relationship, that working relationship together? I think so, because we are different, we have different experiences and we also have different, yeah, as you said, backgrounds. But then um, they actually are supposed to be like this in the movie, the two characters, and they have to find things that they have in common that are really connecting them. And I think we did it. I mean, me and Jason working and talking and rehearsing and getting in the mood. And I hope the characters, they found it as well. You want to work? Yeah. You know what kind of work I do. Step out of my my friend. <laughs> seems so together now, I'm like a different person. Your working relationship with the director, Stephen. Yes. Um, you've obviously come with a plethora of experience with, with, with regards to your action. Did that help your relationship and help him work together um, with what he needed as a first time director? I mean, he's the leader and he's, he's a very confident leader. There, there was no, uh, there was no sort of, uh, there, was, there was nothing that, that was frayed in his department. He knew what he wanted and, uh, you know, I can throw things out, I can give my experience and I can help in situations, but you know, he, he was a, a man with a very clear vision and uh, just a real, a real pleasure to work for, you know. After writing so many screenplays yourself and then helming it, was, was that creatively liberating for you? Yeah, I mean it's great to be able to be in a position to um, try to realise, uh, when you're a writer you, you see the film in your head. And it's just trying to get as close an approximation as possible as you can to the film that's in your head. 
Um, and, you know, half the time it works, half the time it doesn't work. So it's a, it's, it's a hard business. It's, a, it's an unusual team that you have together, yeah, a yeah. nun and an ex-special forces, yes. uh, now homeless man. So what was it about their relationship in particular that you wanted to I explore? Mean, when I, when I uh, was researching the, the homeless situation. I heard a story from several sources about a true relationship between a veteran and a nun. And um, as usual, you know, whatever is most unlikely is the truth, you know, in any fiction. And so that was the thing that really attracted me to this idea that these two people who were the least likely people in the world to meet and to have a relationship had a relationship. Is, is the film a kind of sort of covert representation of the, the plight of the homelessness in, in London? Not really. I mean, what I wanted to do was to tell the story of one person who goes on this journey from being homeless to being rehabilitated and then to sort of falling by the wayside again. And it's not really an attempt to sit down and say, I'm going to deal with this issue. It's deal with one story and see what issues come up. You chose some very um, busy locations, Soho, Covent Garden. Yeah, yeah. What was that like uh, to, logistically? Well, Soho at 3 a.m. is a different place. It really is. Um, and it's quite scary as well. Um, but in terms of the permissions that we needed, it was fine. But it is problematic and difficult and cold and wet and all of those things. But beautiful. You know, Soho at night is gorgeous. And you're, you're, um, you've chosen Jason Statham as your, as your leading man. Yeah. For you, having such an accomplished um, action actor um, on your on team, how was that for you as a, as, a, as, a, as somebody to work with and collaborate with? Well, I mean, he came with his, you know, with a reputation for these for, for the action films, which is great because he's got a certain um, he's got a certain physical presence, which you can't replicate which you can't pretend that you've got but then he gave himself to this role so completely and he did the research and you know we did the research together and he puts in a performance because he met the people that he, we met homeless people we met veterans we met damaged veterans and there is something about the way Jason um, is in other words Jason could have made different decisions in his life and he could have joined the army and he could have been a special forces soldier you know and there's not that many actors where you can say that is the case and so there is something very authentic very, about very truthful performance yeah absolutely what's all happening in this city they want their lives back who are you there are things I have to do. There's enough money to get us away. Why are you running, Joey? Steve Knight, the writer and director, thought up and gave to us a couple of years back and said, I want to make this my directorial debut. You know, he's a very established screenwriter. And uh, we thought, quite simply, it was one of the best things he's ever done and one of the best scripts that come up, we'd come across our desk. So off we went. And, yeah, and as a producer, do, is it uh, a risk for you to, to invest in somebody who's directing for the first time? Well, it depends who, who that person is. And Steve's hung around movie sets an awful lot and worked with some of the best directors in the world. And he's the most calm, relaxed person, you know, in front of the camera, behind the camera. So he's somebody you could really trust. Filming in, in central London, Soho, Covent Garden. Yeah. Not the easiest place for a producer. How hard was that logistically to plan and orchestrate? Right, logistically we thought it was going to be a nightmare making a movie right in the heart of London. In fact, it was really, really easy and it's kind of magical, you know, because once all the tourists and, and the, the bars empty and the tourists go home, the place, the, the residents come out and it really is like a, working in a little village. It was really, really a fantastic experience. I think what comes across um, really well in the film actually is just that you connect to it. People that live in London can right. connect to, to all these places that we recognise so well. Well, hopefully that's what we've done. I mean, it really felt like it when we were making the film and hopefully it communicates through the film that it's, it's a real look at the inside of London from the inside out. You should know how it feels to be down there.